why even use an expander that has dental attachment if there's this level of surgical release occurring? Have you ever used armless custom Marpies? And have you considered the Facegenics mid-facial expander, aka the FME, which is armless, mm -hmm. just to completely eliminate any possibility of dental effect? Um, I'm very open to it. I have not yet. Um, you know, obviously with my surgical assist cases, there's there's no tipping of teeth. So that's out of the equation. The, the benefit of, of the dental component in my cases obviously has to do with accurately placing the MARPI um, based on where we wanted it to go because the, the teeth will sit the MARPI exactly where you designed it. Almost like the surgical guides do. Exactly. In the jaw surgery. Exactly. So that's one benefit of it. The other benefit of it is that it provides you some transverse stability so that the MARPI doesn't twist during expansion. But in, uh, but in by the providing that stability via Newton's third law, that means that some, some force is being put on the teeth. Yeah, but I can show you like tons of cases. We don't get any tipping of teeth because um, the bone is so freed up and released and there's so much skeletal anchorage that like 99% of that force is just distributed to the bone. Um, it's, just, it's just stopping the twisting of the appliance and to minimize asymmetry during expansion. Mm -hmm. um, now, theoretically, two lateral TADs may provide that same transverse stability. So um, that may be something I experiment with. In terms of the Facegenics FME, very excited to try it. To be perfectly frank with you, I am... Uh, uh, I have like a very, very, very small advisory share with the company. So for disclosure purposes, I, I help consult uh, in the initial stages of designing and stuff for that expander a little bit. Um, Thank you for, so, that, for that. Yeah. I had no idea, but that's great that you clarified that for us. Yeah. So um, I'm and excited. By the way, I'm glad that they're talking to people like you because it just shows that they're really committed to. Yeah, they're, they're, they're super committed and. You know, they, they tried to talk to a lot of the um, people that were doing a lot of expansion and get our input on what we thought. Uh, so so I, I just haven't used it yet. Um, you know, I kind of went from MSC to Mart to custom RP um, before the FME was able to be used on people. So it was before it was approved. And then I've gotten great results with my custom RP. So I just haven't switched it up yet, but I will tell you that I'm getting a lot of inquiries from patients asking about it. Me too. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so there, there definitely, there's a, there's a big interest in the population to try it. And, um, I'm open to it. I, I want to try it. And, and, you know, it, it does, it does have the, the, the double parallel bars, which prevent that torquing that I talked about is one of the reasons why we have the dental component to the custom RP. To yeah, the dimensional stability. Exactly, to prevent the twisting during expansion and stuff. So so there's a lot of benefits to it. I just have to try it. Um, uh, so, you know, I, like I told you, I'm having more and more patients ask about it. And, um, you know, if there's a patient that that, that wants to, to try it, knowing that, that, that um, you know, I know for sure 100% what I'm going to get with my custom art because I've done hundreds of them now uh, with my mind technique, but I'm, I'm open to it. And we can always, you know, you can always switch it up, right? I, I think it'll work, but then if it doesn't, I can always switch them out to custom art or something. It also adds a, a significant amount in cost because it is more expensive for you to get. And so that cost has to be passed on to the patient, right? And so yeah. Yeah. if uh, custom art is working, and you can save a patient five thousand dollars by using that instead of the FME. Then so be it. Yeah. So it's it's something at this point where um, I'm comfortable using because I believe in it. I just have to find a patient that wants me to use it and then is willing to pay the like you said the additional costs that that may come with using a product like that. To me, one of the big value adds of the FME is that they do some of the cephalometric work of planning the the vector of the expansion screw to prevent some of the asymmetries that are caused by misorienting the expansion screw inside of a patient's mouth. Uh, I have found that to properly place a MARPI requires some level of cephalometric work for an orthodontist 
orthodontists, of course, being the ones who normally use Marpies, surgeons like you being the exceptional cases, you know, there's Casey Lee, there's Michael Hutz, there's you, maybe a few others that are doing Marpies, but mostly it's orthodontists doing Marpies and they aren't really trained in cephalometric analysis and in uh, taking a cone beam CT and sizing up a patient's face, aligning the CT scan, identifying pre-existing asymmetries, orienting that scan so that you have some sense of what straight looks like and then placing the appliance so that the vector is keeping things straight or at least not making things more asymmetric, right? Um, and yeah, so I mean, I, I, uh, I, uh, that's a great point. So I do do that in my custom RPs. I'm accounting for, for canting uh, and trying to not make it worse or maybe even make it better during the expansion vector phase, um, even yaw. So you can actually adjust for yaw, yaw discrepancies as well as cant discrepancies. Yaw being this sort of thing, like where one, where one part of yeah. the face bulges out a little bit more? Correct. One side's more forward than the other. So you can actually, if you really uh, analyze a CT, you can actually, uh, in designing the vector of the expander, you can account for yaw as well as for canting. So um, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm doing in all my cases. So it's a great point. And I think that's very important for people to, to address when planning these cases.